and welcome to PsyQ Saturday. So this week we went to Rockefeller University where they had the first ever discussion on science, journalism and democracy. Now those are things that might normally not go together, but now more than ever the role of science journalism in improving our democracy has become super important to discuss because we're making a whole bunch of policies right now that aren't based on scientific data. In fact, they're in conflict with the scientific data. While we were on the ground, we interviewed some journalists, editors, and some scientists. Check it out. Science is basically underlying most important stories. Um, whether you're talking about a hurricane coming along, the only reason we know that the hurricane coming is coming is science. Uh, and uh, our ability to predict it is physics, and our ability to see it is the technology and satellites. Um, if you think about any major advance that's actually made our lives better, I think a lot of them would end up being about science, whether you're talking about antibiotics or the germ theory of disease or quantum physics in your phone. It's all science. So to pretend like it doesn't count, I think would be a big mistake. Democracy is critically enabled by transparency, it seems to me, by good critical thinking, by a shared view that is provisional about society. So one of the things I love about democracy, because it allows elections and change is that if new information comes to light, we might change how we feel about that, and then we might shift a policy or change regulation. And in this, science, which by doing the research, getting the information that we need, and then journalism by communicating it more broadly, it seems to me is, is a critical piece of democracy because it enables us to, to, to get at as best we can. Whether we're talking about how much we should invest in the EPA, where we should allocate infrastructure dollars, or whether we should even teach sex education in high schools, science gives us a lot of information as to how to make the best decision in those situations. The question of truth is a difficult one. Um, we are bombarded by information, and uh, everybody wants our attention, and uh, it requires uh, a new level of literacy, I think, to determine what is a reputable uh, uh, news source and what reputable information is. And it's not easy, and it requires work. You just can't read the first thing you see and believe it. And the other thing is, you know, there are studies out there that say that people like to read the things that reinforce the things they already believe in. So the other thing that we have to learn how to do as a society is to learn to challenge our beliefs and accept new things and become uh, truly curious so that we can engage really in the scientific spirit, which, which is you know, about curiosity. The challenges of science communication are capturing and retaining attention, especially in the internet age when things just fly by and people like see phrases and then they assume that they know everything just from that phrase, which is a real danger, especially with clickbait headlines. Probably just a little bit of that critical thinking. Um, a lot of people aren't taught that in schools. Um, one of my big pet peeves, uh, and it doesn't apply to all schools, but in general, the way high school science or any science kind of leading up to college is taught is um, facts and formulae um, and it's static. Science is static, but it's not. That's just sort of the snapshot of what it's like when that textbook comes out or something like that. But then there's a misunderstanding communicated that science doesn't change. Um, and that if it does, then scientists were wrong. And so it's not this process of inquiry. So I think that's one of the, still one of the biggest misunderstandings and that all science communication really needs to, to just chip away at that. The challenges for science journalism in the future, I mean, some of it is, this ongoing struggle that is uh, happening in all areas of media with trying to find funding and trying to find sustainable sources of those, that funding in order to just survive and maintain an, an outlet, maintain a magazine, maintain a news you know, show, whatever. Uh, and then in addition to that, right now, and this is also a continuation, this isn't a brand new thing, but with the current administration and its hostility to at least some areas of science, uh, there might be some areas of the science that thrive under this administration, but some certainly aren't, like climate change policy, for example. Uh, that's going to be increasingly important for science journalism, and it's, go it's going to be a test of our community on how to cover that uh, in a good way. 
Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.